Hello, this is Luminous Star. Welcome to the channel. All of my current subscribers, mwah, thank you guys and gals so much for being my stars. If this is your first time visiting Luminous Star, welcome to the channel. Please like and or share today's video. Topics of discussion. Attempting to figure out the crazy making by the narcissist is a trap. Second topic, emotional versus mental. Third topic, why going no contact can be intimidating. The last topic of discussion are the tools, references, and resources of which you can find in the description box below. First point, attempting to figure out the hidden motives of narcissists and or cluster personality types are designed to be a Pandora's box of a trap. The crazy making by narcissists and or cluster personality types are designed to influence one to possibly become mentally and or emotionally ill in the long run. Okay, so dealing with cluster personalities and dealing with narcissists, they're crazy making, right? I hate to say it, but literally can influence a person to become emotionally, if not mentally ill, all right? Because that's a lot of crazy making to be dealing with for a long period of time. Close to personalities and or narcissists, they're after the narcissistic supply by any means necessary, meaning that if they hurt others along the way, then oh well, you know, they, as long as they get their narcissistic supply, they don't care about how they influence others. So as far as like a person becoming possibly mentally and or emotionally ill is a very real thing. Okay. This is something to really think about if you are currently in a relationship with a narcissist and a cluster personality. Attempting to try to figure out their hidden motives is part of the crazy making. They actually want you to try to figure them out. They already know what they're after and that is the narcissistic supply. They already are aware that they're loyal to their false self images. Let's move forward. When one considers the spiritual, emotional, and psychological challenges of investing in dysfunctional relationships with narcissists, he or she might understand how attempting to figure him or her out more than likely will prove to be a mistake. Narcissists and cluster personality types often do not change over time, regardless of the pleads from their loved ones to do so. A cluster personality and a narcissistic personality are personality disorders which are fixed, meaning more than likely these individuals will not change over time. Under the umbrella of the cluster personality is the borderline personality, the histrionic personality as well as the narcissistic personality. Okay, so these individuals tend to not change over time, even when other people are willing to negotiate with him or her, when other people are practically pleading for them to at least help them to resolve some of their relationship issues. The narcissist and the cluster personality, they like to wash their hands of all of that. They walk away all the while telling themselves that they are good and you are the one that is bad. You're the one that has the problems. You're the one that's the instigator of all the chaos and all the conflict. These individuals tend to not change their story. They tend to not change their perspective. So when a person considers the spiritual, emotional, and the psychological challenges of these types of relationships, with these types of personalities, then yeah, usually it proves to be a mistake because the cost usually ends up being too high. Let's move forward. Narcissists and cluster B personality types have difficulty emotionally regulating, therefore often lack empathy and a desire to build intimate relationships with others. One of the things that can uh, offset mental illness or emotional illness, but let's just go ahead and focus on mental illness first. 
One of the things that can bring that on when a person is dealing with a narcissist and a cluster personality is that he or she is trying to figure out the crazy making. In other words, they're trying to make sense out of what doesn't. These individuals usually are highly sensitive people or they're empaths or they may be behaving codependently. They may not have a problem with feeling their emotions. This is not a bad thing. Again, what may offset mental illness is when these highly sensitive individuals attempt to figure the narcissist and a cluster personality out. They may leave their emotions on the back burner. They may begin to overanalyze the theme of the relationship. A highly sensitive person such as an empath they don't have a problem with feeling deeply. However, when they place that on the back burner and they begin to overanalyze, this is how mental illness can set in. Mental means the brain, the thoughts, okay, thinking. Mental means a person is using their mind. So they don't have a problem feeling no, the issue is that they're trying to figure out or they're trying to use their minds to figure out the crazy making. This is how mental illness can start. The cluster personality and the narcissist, they don't know how to emotionally regulate, meaning they have the opposite issue. They don't feel deeply enough. They keep their emotions out of it, even when they're being histrionic. It's an act. It's part of the crazy making. A highly sensitive person, such as an empath, who is involved with a cluster personality and or narcissist, it is their mental health that is especially compromised due to what I just stated. They don't have an issue with feeling deeply their issue is when they become over analytical about what is going on in the relationship. In other words, they're trying to figure out the crazy making, which doesn't make sense. So they're trying to make sense out of what doesn't. The cluster personality and or narcissist, they're not interested in connecting deeply with anyone. So they don't emotionally regulate. They lack empathy. So they don't feel deeply enough. They're involved with someone who feels deeply. Therefore, mental illness can set in. Emotional illness is when a person often doesn't know how to use their emotions. They don't balance what they think with what they feel. But that's another video. I really wanted to key in on how mental illness can set in for those who are involved with narcissists and cluster personality types. Narcissists and cluster personality types, they have the mentality to go out into the world because they have that mindset to go out into the world and establish material goods, okay? A, a decent livelihood. That's why you often see them with a lot of stuff, big houses, money, cars, whatever, right? But when you look at their personal life, it's upside down. They don't know how to connect with people. They usually use people. So I hope this is starting to clear up for some of you because it is definitely crazy making, <laughs> you know, when we're dealing with narcissists and cluster personalities. They know how to put on the crazy making like no one else. So the cluster personalities and our narcissists, see, because they don't know how to emotionally regulate, they're usually strong on the other side of the house, which is their mentality to go out into the world, make money, have great careers, do what they need to do to have a decent livelihood, if not a luxurious livelihood. While the rest of us who may feel deeply or be highly sensitive people, we tend to know how to have great relationships with other people. And we can also make money too. Let's not get it twisted. What I'm saying is when it comes to the onset of mental illness, with highly sensitive people, it is often because they are involved with people who are not sensitive or emotional enough. They don't know how to use their emotions. 
in a relationship. They don't know how to connect with other people. These are two different spirits. These are two different energy types sharing the same space. It can cause conflict. Now, this does not mean that either one is better than the other. I just want to point out why these types of relationships are so toxic, especially for the highly sensitive person. This is also why sometimes they're diagnosed with a mental illness, when the bottom line is they have been involved with cluster B personality types and narcissistic types for a long period of time, and it is taking its toll. However, I still advise to have a support base to help you to navigate thriving forward past narcissistic abuse. Let's move forward. Loved ones and or those concerned with having a more positive relationship with narcissists and or cluster personality types might attempt to mentally figure out the dysfunctional behavior of him or her while experiencing emotional stress. As I stated before, a highly sensitive person, their issue is not that they do not feel deeply. Their issue is that they do feel deeply. However, they try to make sense out of what doesn't. And that is the narcissist's crazy making. So they tend to be emotionally stressed while the narcissist tend to relax during those times. You ever notice that the narcissist tends to relax, especially after a heated argument? Because they're being narcissistically supplied. They are not trying to connect with others. They're trying to keep the chaos going because this is what feeds him or her. This is what helps them to thrive and survive. Believe it or not, they have got to have that drama. They don't emotionally regulate. So all of the touchy, feely, sentimental stuff, the narcissist and cluster personality, they're very uncomfortable with it. A highly sensitive person, they desire the connection. They desire the intimacy. Whereas the narcissist and cluster B personality, this is what is like death to him or her. They stay away from that. They do not emotionally regulate. The narcissist and cluster B personalities, they don't do healthy relationships, even with the people that they seem chummy with. Just picture a hundred people in a room they're all standing together for a picture, for a portrait. But in the portrait, every last one of those people have an iPhone in front of their faces taking a selfie. Nobody's connecting with one another. So the next time you wonder why narcissists seem to get along with everybody else except you, just think about that. <laughs> because narcissists and cluster personalities they get along with other narcissists and cluster B personalities. This does not mean they have a deeply connected relationship that is full of love because that's not the case. It just looks that way because they're cut from the same cloth. They resonate with each other. They have an understanding of one another. So let's not get it twisted. They, they're not in love. They're not, there's nothing loving going on here. Let's move forward. Empaths, codependents, and or those who do not have issues with emotional regulation tend to use their mental faculties while overly using their emotions to problem solve personal relationship conflicts with narcissists and or personality types. So this is where, again, mental illness can happen because for a long period of time, if the individual who is a highly sensitive person is trying to figure out the crazy making, it's not going to end very well. The highly sensitive person is not balancing what they think with what they feel. This is often why in a lot of my videos, as one of the tools, I advise to learn how to balance what you think with what you feel. Because you can't overuse or misuse your emotions or your mentality. It's a balance. It takes practice to do, 
and it's possible to do. A lot of highly sensitive people who are involved with narcissists and occlusive personalities, very often they are being influenced by the narcissist and occlusive personality to misuse not only their mental faculties, but their emotional abilities. So the highly sensitive person has to balance what they think with what they feel in order to problem solve their issues in a dysfunctional relationship with a narcissist and a cluster personality because if they tried to figure out the crazy making and yet they're emotionally stressed because you can see how there's an imbalance of the mental and the emotional. The narcissist and cluster personality likes to keep people overly emotional and they don't want them to critically think. One way to balance the emotional and the mental is to critically think about what's going on in the relationship while honoring their own emotions. In other words, express what you have experienced. If you have a support base which consists of your having a place to go to that is emotionally safe for you, you can express what you have experienced. You don't have to put on a show for the narcissist and a cluster personality so they're narcissistically fed. I would advise against that. Have a support base. That way you can express what you have experienced constructively. This is one way to balance emotion and mental because you are expressing what you have experienced. You know how you feel. You know what's going on in the relationship with the narcissist and close personality. There's your balance. Having contrast, having positive people in your life, not just the narcissist and cluster personality. See, as long as you have the balance between the mental and emotional, then it's less likely mental illness or emotional illness will come into play. Narcissists and cluster personalities, they like to keep people off balance, especially emotionally and or mentally. To the narcissist and cluster personality, they are very clear on what their agenda is, and that is to obtain narcissistic supply by any means necessary. This means their crazy making is going to feel quite crazy to everyone else. This is often why a highly sensitive person, especially if we're talking about a child, grows up and they end up diagnosed, if not with a mental illness, an emotional illness. Let's move forward. Narcissists and cluster personality types often possess a strong defense against learning how to constructively regulate emotions to help them to problem solve personal challenges in relationships. Those who behave codependently and or who have empathetic abilities sometimes lack confidence in their ability to care for themselves when facing relationship issues. This is another way the balance can come in between emotion and mental is when the person practices self-preservation. When the highly sensitive person, such as the empath, begins to practice self-preservation, it's a game changer for him or her, and it's game over for the narcissist. Because now they have balance between the mental and emotional. They're thinking, they're critically thinking about the theme of the relationship. What's going on in the relationship? Well, what's going on is that the narcissist is pulling shenanigans. They're engaged in all types of diabolical tactics for narcissistic supply. How do you feel about that? The highly sensitive person may begin to think about this. Well, how do they feel? Pissed off, angry, sad. Despondency may be setting in. There's your balance between mental and emotional. Therefore, it is less likely they're going to be suffering from mental illness or emotional illness. Let's move forward. By considering that narcissists and cluster personality types have issues with emotional regulation, while others who might be enablers, flying monkeys, and or emotionally invested in him or her, often overanalyze what makes the relationship dysfunctional. Balance of emotional and mental health is necessary but sometimes not considered. Just like in the previous slide, how does the balance come in 
between emotional and mental. When a person critically thinks about what's going on in the relationship and they combine that with having a place to go, such as a counselor or a therapist, they have that support base to help them to express what they have experienced. There's your mental and your emotional health comprised of the balance. Okay, the person is critically thinking. They're not just all in their emotions. So when they feel these emotions, they're also critically thinking. Once again, there's your balance. Emotional and mental health at play. The narcissist really can't do anything with that. They don't get any supply from that. We, we're human beings. We're going to experience emotions. When we try to stuff that down or downplay that, once again, this is where mental, if not emotional, illness can set in. The narcissist and cluster personality, they do not emotionally regulate. Now we're getting on the other side of this. This is how mental, if not emotional, illness can set in for them. Instead of critically thinking about what's actually going on in the relationship, they try to figure the narcissist out instead. They try to figure out why there's not a connection. When if they shifted that, to wait a minute, what's going on in the relationship and how do I feel about it? Here's the solution for me. Buck the narcissist because they're not, they're not interested in me. See, this is where the critical thinking comes in as well as knowing exactly the emotions you're feeling. What are you feeling? And when you combine that with critical thinking, wow, you've just checkmated. It. It's game over for the narcissist and cluster personality, and it's a game changer for you. When the highly sensitive person balances emotional and mental, yeah, it's a game changer. Unfortunately, this is often not considered. Let's move forward. Should going no contact from the narcissist or cluster personality becomes a real option, the change of reality can be intimidating due to the emotional, spiritual, and psychological challenges that more than likely are to follow. Adjustments are going to have to be made in order to continue to thrive forward and heal after the dysfunctional relationship is over. Okay, so some people, for instance, who have gone no contact this is sometimes why they continue to struggle with healing because they're not looking at the adjustments that have to be made in order to continue to heal and thrive forward. Some people are still emotionally hoping that the narcissist and cluster personality will wake up and see the light, even though they have been no contact for like say five years. If a person is considering going no contact or ending the relationship, or let's just even say the relationship has ended because the narcissist has discarded him or her. In either scenario, this person who may be a highly sensitive person, one of the first things that they're probably going to have to do is they're going to have to take off the rose colored glasses and face reality and see the narcissist for who they really are and what they really represent. Secondly, this individual more than likely will have to take into serious consideration how they want to continue to exist on this planet as a person who no longer invests in dysfunctional relationships with narcissists and cluster personalities. That's going to take a lot of adjustment because you're moving from one reality to another. That's a transformation. That's a transition. It takes time. Third, this individual who's a highly sensitive person, they're probably going to have to take time out to learn who they really are outside of the dysfunctional relationship with narcissists and cluster personalities. Many highly sensitive people have a background with cluster personality types and narcissists being in their lives since their childhood. One of the things that the highly sensitive person has to do once the relationship is over is to reconnect to themselves. They're going to have to change their perspective 
about themselves? How do they see themselves? Do they have a positive self-image or a negative one? They're going to have to change it to benefit themselves. They're going to have to see themselves differently. In other words, it's time for them to start seeing themselves as a person outside of the dysfunctional relationship or relationships. Who are they outside of that? Many highly sensitive persons who have been involved with narcissists and closely personality types, they tend to be enmeshed with him or her. Therefore, they have an identity crisis. One way to break that is to release the toxic energy or to break the low energy cycle from the narcissist and cluster personality. Now that that dysfunctional relationship is over, the highly sensitive person, which can be an empath, he or she is going to have to adjust to existing on the planet as a person who no longer engages or invests in toxic relationships with narcissists and cluster personalities. These are some of the main reasons why some highly sensitive people do not make the adjustments because the challenges that are emotional, psychological, and spiritual are sure to follow. And sometimes this may be overwhelming to some highly sensitive people. Okay, now let's look at some of the tools. Tool number one, take steps to learn how to become your best problem solver, whereas it pertains to the various challenges that the dysfunctional relationship with the narcissist brings. references and resources in the description box below. I'm Luminous Star. I want to thank everyone for joining me today or tonight. And of course, wherever you may be right now, I wish you the very best. Stay tuned for more vlogs and stay tuned for more videos.